is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by Bees Embroidery and Garment Printing, specializing in custom and personalized decoration of gifts, garments, and more. Call 775-727-9444. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Welcome to KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio's News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Well, a repeat of a shooting that occurred last month has now ended a young life, and law enforcement is asking for any information the public may have to find the killer. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is investigating that deadly shooting that occurred early this morning here in Pahrump. A man who was a passenger in a vehicle was shot and killed around 3 o'clock Wednesday morning on the Highway 372 near Woodchips Road. Sheriff Sharon Worley says the suspect, who was driving a gold-colored vehicle, has not been located. According to the sheriff, the suspect shot the victim from their moving vehicle. The driver of the victim's car, who was not injured, then took the victim to Desert View Hospital, where he died. The suspect vehicle fled the scene. The driver of the murder victim's car is the same person driving the same vehicle that was shot in early May while driving in the same area. He was flown to a Las Vegas Vegas hospital after that shooting where he recovered from his injuries. The sheriff's office is asking anyone who may know anything about this morning's shooting to give them a call. The number is 775-751-7000. Well, Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue were dispatched for a mutual aid assignment last night on Highway 116 near mile marker 40 to find a diesel versus auto collision in the southbound lanes of the highway. Luckily, no injuries have been reported. Nevada Highway Patrol is investigating the cause of this crash. And brush fires in Pahrump Valley are keeping firefighters busy these days, and a series of fires Monday in the same general area are now under investigation. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue Chief Scott Lewis says conditions remain ideal for brush fires. You know, dry conditions, we have high temperatures, um, and in some cases we're having these breezy conditions in different areas of the valley. So as we talked about previously is that we have the ideal fire conditions occurring within the valley. Our fuel loads of the mixed fuels, the brush, grasses are drying, and most of them are actually quite dry. So anytime there's an ignition source, we're having a significant fire event occur. Those fire events aren't just occurring on people who occupy certain properties, but they're also occurring in vacant lots, things like that. So yesterday we had a series of fires that occurred in the same geographical area. As crews were responding, they found the spot fires, but they also found other, it looks like maybe even intentionally set fires, including one that was over two acres in size. There's a, a, seri a number of things that could cause these ignition sources. One of the things we're watching closely is improper use of fireworks. Uh, that can cause serious issues for us because it can propel them distances, things like that. So we're asking everyone to be extremely careful, don't utilize fireworks in an inappropriate manner so we can minimize the fire risk this season. The fires that occurred yesterday, the brush fires are all under investigation. They occurred in the same geographical area. There's some witnesses thought they saw something, reported both to the fire department and the sheriff's office, and we're jointly investigating. Well, did you feel it? The United States Geological Survey reported a 5.8 magnitude earthquake struck about 17 miles southeast of Lone Pine, California, near Death Valley today around 1040 this morning. Residents reported feeling the quake here in Nye County as well as Las Vegas. No injuries or damage has been reported, and that was followed by dozens of smaller aftershocks. News 25 will return right after this break. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. Lawmakers have launched an investigation into the meatpacking industry, and government leaders are getting their first look at Lordstown Motors manufacturing plant as the company prepares to unveil its first all-electric pickup, and the sale of new homes is on the rise. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Topping our news, the meatpacking industry is now on the agenda on Capitol Hill. 
Senators Elizabeth Warren and Cory Booker are opening an investigation into Tyson Foods, JBS USA, Cargill, and Smithfield Foods. It's reported that meatpacking companies exported a record amount of pork to China. Back in the U.S., there were warnings of meat shortages at grocery stores and price hikes. There are also concerns about worker safety during COVID-19 at meat plants. Reaction so far is coming from Cargill, which is reviewing the senator's letter. Vice President Pence will tour the new Lordstown Motors facility tomorrow. Today, the governor will take a look. The new all-electric pickup truck plant was installed after General Motors pulled out last year. Sales of brand new homes in the market are on the rise. New home sales increased 16.6% last month. That is just shy of the pre-COVID-19 levels. Thanks so much, Angela. Well, Best Bet Products has just signed a lease to manage the Mountain Falls Grill Room, Bar, and Restaurant. The company plans to make some changes, including the addition of gaming. Some Mountain Falls residents aren't happy with those plans, but Sean Holmes, president and owner of Best Bet Products, says he's confident they can address their concerns. Uh, we're a local gaming operator here in town. We have about 25 locations here in town, another five outside of Clark County. We also own the Stage Stop. We have our own slot accounting system that we lease to other bars, and we sell used equipment to some of the bigger operators like Silverton and other bigger casinos. We are looking at leasing it out from William Lyons. Uh, we'll be running the, the restaurant and the banquet facilities, including the golf and all food and beverage operations. Uh, we're looking at possibly put in gaming as to help subsidize some of the costs for the food and, and the losses that they're occurring today. Uh, it would be no more than 15 machines. We'd still maintain a smoke-free environment, uh, probably a, a handful of machines, five to six on the bar for the golfers. Uh, maybe, you know, the difference on the floor for some of the local residents that want to play Keno closer to home and, and uh, it will be a, a small amenity to an otherwise nice facility. We are going to add a wall to kind of separate the bar from the family dining. I think that the families should be able to have a dining area separate from the bar where it's 21 typically and up and where the gaming and the liquor is being served. And I think we can draw a bigger crowd to the family side of the restaurant if we separate those out. But other than that wall, there, you, there won't be much difference in the facility. What about the 24-hour operation? Is that still something that's in the air? Are you discussing that uh, still? Because I know that there's been some people concerned. Yeah, so the, the lease has only been inked for about three or four days. So there is a lot of stuff that's still in the works as in deciding procedural stuff. So I, I think it'd be just too soon to say when those things have... Too soon to announce that. You know, gaming is not for everybody. I, I can tell you there's a lot of residents that reach out to us and said they're excited to have gaming. So there is always two sides to every coin. Um, I'm. I believe we can try to find something that works for everybody. So we'll work with everybody. We're part of the community. We want to be part of the, not just Prump, but also Mount Falls. We're going to cater, you know, the community of Mount Falls will be lion's share of our business, and we recognize that. So we want to appease as many people as possible. There's a lot of misinformation out there because people got ahead of the story. Um, I think a lot of people came to some decisions that just frankly weren't true. For example, being a smoky casino when we had no intention of having smoking in the facility. Uh, they're, they're calling it a casino and they're picturing 50, 60 games throughout the banquet facility where it's not going to be that. It's going to be the most they can have is 15. We may not even use all 15. If the demand's not there, we'll have five or six. And if there's no demand, then we won't have them at all, right? So I think the market of the community will decide whether they want machines. If, if nobody plays them, we're not going to pay taxes on things that aren't being played. If they are playing them, then obviously there was a need for them, and those people should have the right to play if they want them closer to home. Well, Holmes is meeting with Mountain Falls homeowners this evening. He says this will give him a chance to better explain his plans for the grill room bar and restaurant and hear from residents concerned about a gaming operation in their neighborhood. Are you thinking about spraying your house or yard with insecticide to keep bugs at bay this summer? Recent research suggests some pest control products may increase risk of death. Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Dennis Brumer says the research associates a certain type of insecticide with cardiovascular death. So the investigators basically um, made the statement that there is an increased death rate in those um, subjects in the NHANES database that had the highest level of insecticides in their urine. 
Using data from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, researchers requested urine samples from over 2,000 people. They measured the level of pyrethroid insecticide in the samples. This chemical is widely used in household and garden pest control products, pet sprays and shampoos, lice treatments, and mosquito repellents. Results suggest the highest levels of insecticide found in the samples were associated with an increased risk of death from cardiovascular-related causes. Dr. Brumer says it's important to know the number of deaths was very small over time. However, he says the research is eye-opening. We have very sensitive testing and we find something in the urine that's not supposed to be there naturally and it tells us that, well, we are exposed to insecticides. Dr. Brumer recommends limiting exposure to insecticides when possible and advises people to try non-chemical options for pest control first. Complete results can be found online in JAMA Network Open. Thanks so much to Brad Francis for that report. When we return from this break, we're going to introduce you to a popular Facebook creator. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Well, if you commute to Las Vegas, or even if you just drive around Pahrump, there's a good chance you have used the Pahrump Road Commuters Report on Facebook. The group, with nearly 7,000 members, provides helpful information for drivers, including warnings about accidents, road construction, and traffic delays. Cheryl Anderson started the Facebook group five years ago, and these days, members are able to win some great prizes, too. I have a Pahrump Road Commuters uh, road report and commuters and um, we started doing contests a, a while back. I really have a heart for giving anyways so I thought well hey I have a thing for tires so I flag out there as well so I seen people driving back and forth their tires were not good and I thought well let's do some giveaways some tire giveaways to people that really need tires so that's kind of how it started then I thought let's do Maverick gift cards and from there it kind of just kind of took off. I started out with donation pages and we went from there and I have some great supporters that have supported me faithfully throughout that endeavor and um, so we did I don't I don't even know like six of them I think last year so I had kind of went on there asking so what what kind of contest should we do next and I had suggested an oil change and within a day Denise Arcio from Crump Auto Plaza had got a hold of me and she said we will donate too free oil changes and tire rotations and I said okay I'll do two contests on that by the time the whole thing was done she didn't let me do any yeah. and she ended up doing all six she did six uh, oil changes and tire rotations from there it kind of just escalated and our little town has just they're just stepping up we're in a time right now where we came through COVID-19 and we we're now in this other whole season of things and and in the middle of that Deanna there's some really good people here some lady and I'm not sure what her name was she set up a thing adopt a senior and your page is out there and there are unsung heroes out there yeah. Deanna every day they're doing something in our community and giving back so this is just a kind of a very cool positive thing to do for our community in this time. Up to this point I've been doing uh, strictly on my page but I think we're going to reach out a little bit further. Mm -hmm. We have that upcoming contest on your uh, COVID-19 people helping people COVID-19 yeah. page mm -hmm. that's coming up um, July on the 3rd yeah. so you want to look for that on your page and then we will start the contest and then we will um, we'll go from there. Thanks to Cheryl for everything that she does. And of course, the People Helping People page is glad to um, spread the word. If you're a business that would like to donate goods or services for a contest on the Prompt Road Commuters Report, you can reach Cheryl Anderson by sending her a private message through Facebook. Well, if you're looking to adopt a pet in need of their forever home, in today's Save a Pet, we meet Mama Dog. Darby O'Donnell joins us from Desert Avon Animal Society with more. Today's Save a Pet is proudly sponsored by Jason Ernest with Mountain West Lawyers. Call 775-727-9500. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Mama Dog. Mama Dog is a American Staffordshire Terrier mix. She has some white on her chest and her face, um, and then some like little beige spots on her body. She is a very sweet and calm personality. 
Um, she likes her little tummy rug. She has the classic American Staffordshire Terrier mix smile, um, where they have like such a big smile and like so friendly. Um, she's actually been at Desert Haven since March, so she's waiting to go for her forever home and be with the people and love them forever. Um, so she would definitely qualify for the senior to senior program. So seniors over the age of 60 can come to Desert Haven and have free adoption fees for any of the animals. Um, we also think she would be a really good match for veterans. Um, veterans, active duty and retired also has free adoption fees here at Desert Haven. So if you want to come and see Mama Dog or any of her friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society and spend some time with her in the yard so she can show you her cute little personality, um, give them a call ahead of time, 775-751-7020, you, so you can make an appointment. Otherwise, you can always look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. That's a cute dog. I hope somebody adopts her. Let's take a look outside. Right after this break, we're going to come back and tell you what's in store for our forecast. Got some interesting clouds going on out there. We'll tell you more right after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by... Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. All right, today in Las Vegas, your high of 109. 83 is your low tonight. Death Valley 117. Tonight's low 88. Amargosa 107. 76. Beatty 103. 72 is your low tonight. Goldfield 96. 61. Tonopah 95. 59. Carson City's high of 94. Today and low tonight of 57. Fallon 100 and a 60 tonight as your low. And Fernley 96. 61. Today here in Pahrump, partly cloudy with your high of 104 winds out of the south southwest at 12 miles per hour humidity at 9 percent and sunrise 527 this morning tonight still clouds up there in the sky with your low of 78 degrees winds out of the southeast at 11 miles per hour humidity at 16 percent and sunset 805 well, we got your seven-day forecast with the wind still here and really kicking up there on Sunday, going away on Tuesday and Wednesday, along with some of those temperatures starting out next week, dropping down. We got Thursday with partly cloudy skies out of the south at 14 miles per hour as your winds with a high of 103 at low of 76. Friday, winds out of the south-southwest at 11 miles per hour, your high of 101 with a low overnight at 77. Saturday and Sunday, clear skies. On Saturday, you got 12 miles per hour winds out of the south southwest with your high of 104, a low of 79, making a big spread there overnight. And then Sunday, like we said, those winds are kicking up to 26 miles per hour with your high of 98, 69. Monday and Tuesday, both 88 degrees as your highs during the day with the winds tapering off there on uh, Tuesday. The overnight lows in the low to mid 60s and then Wednesday just coming up just a little bit to 94, 69 with sunny skies. And that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell from all of us up here at KPVM-TV and the East Country Radio. Have a great night. See you back here tomorrow.